one of the first things you'll encounter once you get going and you know how to produce a little bit, you know how to get the samples going and stuff, is the relation between beats and bass. Now, this is a topic that I've touched upon multiple times before, but still, also in the courses that I'm giving, it seems to be sometimes a tedious process if you want to get it right. So today, it's all about getting better beats and bass. If you're ready for that, let's go do that right now. Yo, what's up, I'm Mental Location, and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Hang around until the end of this video, I'll tell you all about our community, about Discord, about Patreon, and all that good stuff. So, better beats and bass, that's the topic for today. It's not a uh, hard one, I think it's self-explanatory. We need to get some beats going and we need to get a bass sound of some sort involved. Now I'm going to use the Minilog XD and create a bass sound from scratch, which I'm going to stick atop of the grooves that are coming from the Octatrack. Let's see if we can make that work. Now, I can explain it at length, but let's just explain it as we go. If you're ready, let's go over to the live set and let's see if we can make that work. All right, so let's get the show on the road. Okay, so today my friend is going to be the um, me log XD, <laughs> which looks a little bit dusty, but um, a great tip from uh, one of the patrons, namely Brian, who says like, get a brush, you know what I mean? So you can imagine that me going into this uh, store trying to get like a makeup brush, uh, make people really, really look funny, like, really? You? But anyway, so, okay, we've got this Minilog XD sitting right here. I have got co connected through 5-pin DIN MIDI because I think um, the sequencer tends to screw up all the other clocks in this culprit. And there's a lot of stuff you don't see. I've got a launch control XL. There's a minus DM12 sitting underneath uh, the Korg Minilog XD. There's a Black Sky Strymon pedal. Then there's a DD7 delay right here, which I have got uh, sitting on a send. So this is daisy chain. So first delay, then reverb. That should always be the algorithm, I think. Octatrack Mark II sitting right here. MPC uh, Live Mark 1, then the Acid Box 3 that's connected to separate outputs, namely 3 and 4 on the Kai MPC Live, the Moog Minitor XD, then there is a um, MIDI fighter right here connected to the black box that's not connected to the mixer at the moment because we're not going to use it today, and the Dave Smith Tetra. Now, what else did I forget? No, a lot of wires, um, there's a lot of stuff. Um, but we're going to get into a simple groove of some sort and then create a bass line. If you don't know the Minilog XD, it, in my honest, humble opinion, is one of the most powerful but underrated synthesizers because it does a lot of stuff really neatly and I can get, maybe it's just Lucien foolproof, I can get to results pretty fast. Now, um, quick explanation, it's got three oscillators or at least one sort of like a multi-engine that you can stick even um, a user uh, patches in uh, and then there's two uh, oscillators sitting right here with your uh, waveforms right here which is like the saw the um, uh, triangle and the square I sometimes use this uh, user um, uh, oscillator for noise or grit if I want to get a little bit of a tech going there's some nice effects there's delay reverb and then there's a bit of modulation going on the, of course a filter section right here with filter envelopes and uh, envelopes sitting right here the mixer in the middle drive um, yeah yeah this is a versatile machine I'm very um, hands-on I would say yeah so you can just say whatever you want to do with LFOs here. LFO can go to filter, can go to pitch one or pitch two, you know, shape, everything. It's a cool machine. I'm going to make some bass out of this thing today. What you would want if you've got a simple groove going, let's listen to what the beats that I have right now. I've got beats sitting on the Octatrack. So this is a, what I would call a, a simple house beat or a simple um, electronic music beat with instead of a clap i've opted to go for a snare there's even a little bit of reverb on the snare my old uh, trick that i always do with the, with the, um, uh, the drum roll 
that's mapped the volume to scene B on the Octatrack. Now, um, on the uh, Minilog XD, I have to go and say, let's go program change it all the way up to, um, yeah, I have to go all the way up because, uh, do a different bank, um, Okay, above, um, a certain, I'm not this, okay, I got it now, um, bank two, bam, and then going down, yeah, there you go. The initialized programs start on top of, uh, 200 presets that it comes with, right? So there's 200 presets on the machine and everything above it going all the way up to 500, if I'm not mistaken, is, yeah, just initialized patches, which means that it doesn't do anything other than as you can hear, right? I also got this um, thing connected here, so I don't have to play on the keyboard because I've got some sort of a sketchy setup, but I want the Octotrack to be in the frame as well, so that's why I did it this way. And a lot of people ask me, why do you not use the keyboard to play stuff? Why do you mostly use the pads on the MPC? And the thing is, if I got my keys laid out in front of me, probably what I'm going to do is play stuff that I always play. And when it comes to... I can do different things with this thing right here. Um, the bank pages on the MPC are also... Uh, the the height of the note so the more I go up the higher the note is going to be which means you can hear so let's go here now there's different things to do with a bass drum I'm going to take the, the snare out different things to do with the bass line I can um, opt to play a bass line that's placed wherever a kick is playing like one and then here and here it's always going to be on the bass for this initialized patch sound it doesn't really matter but if i'm going to start shaping the sound obviously you will end up uh, lowering filters and then the low end content of this sound is going to interfere with the kick drum and since we're not overly mixing anything on the mixer or i'm not mixing anything at all i'm not even compressing or eqing everything means that you would like to shape the sound in a way that it in immediately sits with the uh, drums so let's get the two uh, culprits in the same uh, street same house i'm gonna see if i can find some sort of a semi-intelligent baseline Yeah, I can do that. Nice. Well, <laughs> I think the pattern is nice. I think the bass line sounds, sounds like, uh, you know what? Okay, now that's one oscillator activated at the moment, which is oscillator number one, VCO one. So if I turn this down, you'll hear nothing, which means only one oscillator is playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go in, I think I've hit the filter knob a little bit, and I'm going to start enveloping it up immediately. Let's turn it down. Well, it starts to crackle, so the waveform is breaking up. Do a little bit of an uh, FM style baseline. I would use this waveform, which is a square. Let's go to this for the saw because the saw has got a lot of um, character. And if I'm lowering this, yes. Turn on the 
Quick. Okay, now we're going to start giving it a little bit of more character, I think. So I'm putting the resonance up to maybe say 12 o'clock and play around with the filter. Make sure that the other oscillators are off. So you can hear that it's starting to introduce overtones already, which I will exaggerate now. And I'm going to look for the sweet spot with the resonance so that the overtones are falling away. But I need them because they're going to make sure that if I have a kick drum and there are some conflicting frequencies, the overtones are going to make sure that your brain is going to localize where the kick always is, or where the bass sound is always going to come from. See what I mean? Because you can hear on the one place where they meet, which is there, you can hear that, oh, there's a lot of information, boom, going. So I'm going to probably take off a little bit of this. Shorten the nose a little bit. Yeah, I'm liking that. Maybe a little bit higher. Talking about the uh, cutoff frequency. Yeah, nice. Let's see how it works with the rest of my drums. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm digging this. See? Yeah. And so th this is a way of, of looking at um, uh, a bass sound that can work on top of the groove. Now, mind you, this is family. The beats and the bass, they need to probably live on that same block, on that same street, ideally, because I see a lot of people going in and going like, now you can really hear the beats apart from the bass. What you would want in order for this to work, you would like to place that low end content in the subwoofer so, so that there's room for other stuff to play, right? We're only talking about one oscillator here. So, but what if you were to um, maybe enter a little bit more sound onto it. That's what we're going to do in a second. But I'm trying to look for a sweet spot here. Let's take the snare, because I think the snare is taken away from the attention that I need. I want, I don't want to break up the beat. Boom, ta, boom, ta, you know? I just want to go like boom, boom. Because this, in my mind, is two, two, four, two, four. It's cool, but at the same time, um, I think there's a lot of groove in the note placement of the bass as well. And I think that's a very important factor. For me, this is immediately where I determine if the bass line is going to um, um, push the groove forward, yes or no. I think the snare should almost always only be there to emphasize what the groove is doing, but for sake of getting groove on the road. I mean, this... Or this... When I add this in now... I think the bass drum has more effect right here. But, so let's turn the, 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 the um, snare drum off for a second. Now, I like this. I think that it could work. Still, I think it's a bit on the dark side though. So what I would do, I'm talking about the bass sound. I think it's a little bit dark. But for the bass layer of this sound, uh, I think it's okay. So what we're going to do is enter the next oscillator, and which is as simple as, in my case now, turning down this first oscillator, the volume here, uh, or on the mixer, and then turning the second oscillator up and trying to get a different character because these two sounds now have to work together. And ideally in such a way that they don't, uh, you, you shouldn't be hear them, you shouldn't be um, listening to them apart from each other. They should mold and morph into one consistent sound, right? So you can do that by pitch maybe. And yeah, uh, you <laughs> This is uh, seven semitones up, so uh, you knew that that was going to happen. I think. Okay. 
first, I'll slide it in. And then blend them a little bit more. So on the mixer, I'm turning this down. Let's do it. Let's go in and do a different um, waveform altogether. Uh, it could work, but I think it's going to be a little bit too glassy, maybe. If I don't want the sound to be too cool, too glassy, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go for the same sawtooth waveform, right? Okay, so we're going to go and mix it in a little bit more. Ooh. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yeah. Now, how do I come with a pedal like this, like toot toot, boom, 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 I don't know. I literally don't overthink it. I just play something and I put this thing on auto quantize, so whatever I hit, I'm never going to miss a uh, groove. If you get a little bit more comfortable or you're doing lo-fi kind of stuff, then obviously I understand that you would like to turn the quantize off and the quantize being... Uh, uh, here, you know, you can just turn it off, you can do your grooves. There's a bit of groove going, so the global timing here is on. If you want to be floaty and you want your beats to just like flow all over the beat, you can just turn that off on your global timing correct, right? I, however, stick it on the grip because I am sparse like that. I don't care. Living large, living on the edge. But I've got um, the the swing on 54 because this jig, 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 jig by beat is very straightforward especially with a snare so you would love <coughs> the groove to come from uh, the notes uh, playing the bass back on topic i've got my dual slavers here now in order to pinpoint it if you filter it down now you really have to look for it so what you would want to do is get a little bit of an attack situation going here so, and you can do that by means of, let's turn all my drums off, of the third oscillator here. If you turn this on, turn this on, sorry. It starts to introduce that razor blade kind of vibe, and there are different ones. See? That's the mate. A bit of peak. But that's also going to introduce low end. So what I would like to do, low, let's go for that higher one. But then you have to be careful. Now, <clears throat> reason I use this is because it does something else on the filter. Listen, you hear poop, poop, poop. It hits it. You can even see it on the waveform. Bop. So there's a bit of a percussive uh, thing in lowering this specific uh, noise. So, and then we just add this into, see, now it starts to become a little bit more percussive at that, and that percussive angle is what you need in order for it to stand out when it plays with the bass drum. I'm liking that. Now, I think this bass line is pretty much done, you know? I can play with the length. So, different genres have different lengths, obviously. If this is more of a housey kind of vibe or a uh, melodic house kind of vibe, let me put it that way, I'll probably go for... Right? Let's go quick, fast, to a different track. Say like, okay, let's play maybe uh, a synthesizer of some sort in there, hype synth. Play that same thing. Loud as hell. Just something bear with me. It's just just to give you an idea, right? 
Okay. Oh, let's just do it quick first and stick it out of. Fun. This is a bug that I found out. Ah, yeah, of course. So um, I stick it out of output three four. Um, so it goes out of 3.4 going into the asset box and then it has to return back into the sampler input. So here it is. So now I've got a little bit more control over that piano. And now I can bury it into the um, bass line that we have right here. Now for different sounds, obviously this piano has got a long envelope so it plays longer. And sometimes we don't want that. So when we filter it down, it becomes some sort of a hint of the chord or the structure that we're playing. And then you get to play with... See how this instantly starts to go... This is a completely different vibe, I think. Longer notes, I like it, but you know... Okay, so... A trick also is to use um, delay and reverb, but this is a tricky part if you're just starting out. You need to not overdo it, overdrive it, or you know, overthink it even. Um, so to hear it, go back, turn all your sounds off first, and start with short notes. Open the filter up a little bit so you got a little bit more character. I mean, this resonance thing is a little bit uh, exaggerated. So we're going to turn the reverb, now we're going to turn delay on first. Let's do that first. This is the timing, and this is the depth, so going here, it's going to go all the way to... You're going to safely go to the bathroom, and this thing will be playing still. But we want it to be short and snappy. Yep, that's what we like. So, now it repeats. Turn it down a little bit. Yep, with the kick. Man, yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is add reverb. Now, the trick for me is the further I get into this um, reverb delay thing, the softer I'm going to put stuff, because if I'm going to exaggerate this reverb, I'm turning it on, and I'm going to start going like, oh yeah, let's go, like, let's space it out. Reverb is, um, yeah, panning inside and out. You know, it's not left and right, but it's going in or out of the groove. So this is a trick we used to do with vocalists that weren't singing too much on, um, uh, on pitch. We use a lot of reverb because it smooths out the transients. It keeps, it makes it sound a little bit lazier. So that's not what we want. So we were, are looking for a middle ground here. to give it a little bit of its own uh, sort of like room, because using reverb also sets sounds apart from the rest of the groove. With the bass line, um, I would be very, very careful with reverb and delay. It could work, but if you hear it, it's probably too loud. So it should be way softer than you think you should put it. But I think this for the reverb, This for the delay, probably. Play it with a kick. With the filter. And a little bit longer because I think it's now, it's a little bit too, too short. Now. So let's see it and go in like this. Open it up. Filter it, open a little bit. I think I don't like what the resonance is doing to the sound. But once again, when you have a synthesizer like this, it's cool that the knobs go from all the way right to all the way left. But the sweet spot that I keep talking about is finding where it it does something to enhance the sound. You know, with subtractive synthesis, obviously you would like to take stuff out, but slowly. So sometimes I tell people, can you place the filter up a little bit? And they go like, yes, of course. Can you turn uh, down the volume? Yes, of course. 
that's not how it works. This thing is like, give yourself a bearing, something that sits well for you, and just try to just like sort it out in such a way that you can, when you add something or subtract something, um, it feels natural, you know? It should be a natural feeling now. This is one baseline that we got right here. I think that with the... I can build it up. I'm not so sure about the reverb, but it was just for sake of, uh, of um, an example, right? Okay. Nice. Okay, guys. So, and instantly you can dance to this because my philosophy is also this should be the first thing that you should dance to. Your track is starting to become a track with this bass and drums. Whatever you add to it is only going to add to the flavor of what you think the um, identity of the track is. But when it comes down to dancing to the track and just like moving to the groove, this should also always be something that's very rudimentary. People should instantly feel like, oh damn, I'm, oh yeah, I'm going to dance to this. I don't care that I'm wearing my new sneakers. I don't care that I've got my makeup on and stuff. I'm going to dance the hell out of this. That's what you would like to achieve. So get there fast. So in hindsight, get drums that work. I didn't really go over the drums because I mean, drums I think is easy. Get really cool sounds that work. Um, get a hi-hat, get a close hi-hat, get a snare or a clap or whatever, you know, pl place it. Uh, but don't overcrowd the drums as of yet if you're using a bass line later, because then you'll get into trouble. The bass lines most often have a lower frequency than your drums, so if you're going to start overcrowding the drums and there's no more room, um, this is going to be very hard to just fit that in. So just like sometimes just go in, like I said, go in with a kick and the bass. I'm going to take this filtered uh, piano out and just like play. Because this is a drop, right? This is like, oh my God, if you do this in the middle of a track on a festival, everybody's going to understand that you mean business. So you want this stuff to work. And when you enter your drums in, something should go like, oh, damn it. Yeah, yeah, elevation, what, going, right? Okay. That's my process. I think it works um, because I've done it numerous times and this is the only way for me to get into a sort, of, sort of a flow that I say like, okay, yes, this works. You know, um, there's different ways of doing it. Please let me know in the comments section below how you would work it and I'm open to hear about you. Do join the community that we do at patreon.com slash location with a bridge to Discord where we talk shop, we talk about uh, gear, gas, about equipment, how to wire it, how to travel with it, uh, what to buy, what not to buy, etc. You can drop your demos there. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. And there is a new challenge. Yes, there is a new challenge. The challenge being um, go outside, think outside of the box. If you have some sort of recorder, do record some sounds out there and create a track. I don't really, really care what kind of track it is as long as you're in the process of creating a track, but do create it with the sounds that you have recorded and try and make it organic sounds. So don't go stand next to a synthesizer in your local uh, hobby shop, obviously. Do create sounds from scratch because it helps with the sound design. It helps to set your focus on different things. So uh, see if you can work that out. So that's the challenge for the upcoming uh, two months, this month and the next. Um, yeah, um, if you want to get some cool clothing, do check out uh, my fourth wall shop. I think I've got a link in the description uh, below the fold on this page as well. And I think that that is that. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you, sir or lady, are a uh, absolute superstar. I do mean that. So keep watching this space next week. Your boy is going to be back in the kitchen. Thank you for watching and I'm out. Peace. Thank you.